Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at graphing. Uh, given a couple points, can we draw the line that goes through those two points? Can we name the y and x-intercept? And I'm going to actually even add to it. Can we come up with a rule possibly from it? So just to kind of give a little bit of review on that even. So this is uh, CPM course three, and this is section 5.2.2 specifically number 5-38. So it says on graph paper, plot the points negative three, seven and two negative three and draw a line through them, then name the X and Y intercepts of the line. So keep in mind when you're given a point, remember points are always X comma Y, right? It's your X and then your Y. So my X is negative three, my Y is seven. And so the other thing you got to remember is the horizontal axes is the x axis the vertical axis is the y axis and they're basically number lines right so this x axis the number line means that this is zero then that's one two three and so on and so forth and then going the other direction negative one negative two negative three and so on. so it's a number line and then the same thing with the y's right so y is going up they're positive and going down they're negative so you just have this, each of these lines, each of these grid lines represent one uh, space is what I'm going to keep it at. So let's graph this. So I'm graphing negative three, seven. That means the X is negative three. So right here is where X is negative three and Y is seven. So where's Y is seven? So this is four, five, six, seven. So if I connect, if I'm looking to find that point, Where's X? X is negative three right here. Y is seven there. So where do those connect? Those meet right there. So it's at this point would be considered the point negative three, seven. That's how we graph points. So that's that point right there. All right. So then this one, two, negative three. So X is two, right? That's my X. That's my Y. X is two. Y is negative three. So right here is where Y is negative three and X is two. So they meet at that point there. So it wants me to connect them and then find the Y and X intercept. So I'm going to connect them like so. Okay. And then decide where that Y and X intercept are. So let's see. It looks like if I'm connecting, it looks like it crossed one. Let's see if I can determine if this is right. So from what it looks like, I'm crossing there. It looks like I'm going through one for my y-intercept is what it looks like. I think so. Let's see if I can determine if that's correct because this is going down four over two, down four over two. So something's not. I don't, I don't think I drew my line right. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you something, how you, how you consider this is if you, when you have a point, by the way, this point was two negative three, right? So I'm going to, so I, cause just to make sure my line wasn't off here, I'm going to draw what we call the slope triangle, right? The slope triangle is from one point to the next. And then you, you determine the sides. How long do I have here? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this side is 10 and one, two, three, four, five. This side is five. So if I go down 10 over five, that can actually be reduced, right? So this, this whole idea of rise over run, the slope triangle 10 over five would be the same as two over one, right? Because I can take 10 over five. 10 over five is the same thing as two over one. So I can draw little slope triangles and get here as well. So watch two over one puts me there. Two over one puts me there. Two over one, ah, I was right, puts me there. Two over one puts me there. And then two over one gets me back there, right? So that's good. I wanted to double check to make sure it did cross at one. So my line was right. And I checked it by taking the slope triangle from point to point and then reducing it so I can see the same pattern of what's happening here. So my y-intercept, so let's get to the answers here. My y-intercept then would be right there. 
And where is that? That's at the, the X is zero and the Y is one. So the Y intercept is right there at zero, one. And then the X intercept, where's the X intercept? The X intercept is where it crosses the X axis, right? So here's the X axis. It crosses right there. It looks like in between zero and one. So the X intercept is going to be at one half. So, so you write one half for the X and zero for the Y, because that's what, that's where the X intercept is. It's where it crosses the X axis. So the X intercept is one half zero. The Y intercept is zero one. So those are the X and Y intercepts where the line crosses the axes. All right.